All right, you know what time it is? It's time to pour some hot metal in a hole. So let's get going. So on this one, we're gonna use this pattern right here. Let me get them real close so you guys can see them real well. We're gonna use this skull pattern and we're gonna make a drawer knob out of them. And it has this little nub on the back. So in this one, we're gonna make something utilitarian, something that actually works. And this is gonna be our end product. It's pretty cool. I made a little wooden piece so that way it kind of emulates what it'd look like on the end of a drawer to grab a hold of. So, and uh, if you look, it's, it's stuck on with a, with a screw, just like the regular knobs on a drawer. And you can see this isn't gonna be held in a vise too well. So I'm also gonna show how to hold things in a vise that are very irregular in size, and we'll get to work on this. All right, let's go pound some sand. That hole in my board is where the back of the skull is gonna go in, and that way the skull will lay flat. So when I pack the sand, the uh, skull will actually pack in one half, which will be the drag, and then the little nub on the back that I'm gonna drill out and thread, that's gonna be in the cope. The powder that I'm using is talc powder. You can also use baby powder if you don't like the uh, talc or possibility of respiratory problems. I use a dusk mask and the palc seems to work really well. I'm going to be using the small jeweler's flask that I have. The skull is pretty small so it'll fit in there perfectly. The two small holes over to the side, there's actually four over there. It was from my previous video where I was able to do a three-dimensional casting by using match plates. If you want to check that one out, that's the one that I made the grenade in. So just look for the grenade on my YouTube channel. Thanks to editing magic, we're going to kick this forward to where the flask is pretty much packed up. And then just scrape it flat like any other time. This is the one of the tricks I like. Just go ahead and pick your board and your flask up and turn the whole thing upside down. And then that way you have no worries about your pattern falling out. To help me paint the pattern, I drilled a little hole in the back and that's what the blue tape is covering. I was able to put it on the end of a stick and use paint. There we go with the uh, baby powder cornstarch. I'm going to powder it up so that way it separates the cope and the drag. And as much powder as I have to put on there, I wouldn't use talc. I just go ahead and uh, just use baby powder for that. It works perfectly fine. All right, and just like the other side that we just packed up, we're going to pack this side up exactly the same. And abracadabra, just like more editing magic, it's completely packed up. And just scraping the side off. I sped this part up because, man, this pattern wanted to make me look like a freaking idiot in front of the camera. It just would not slide out, and I didn't want to tear up the mold. And there it finally slid out. And thank goodness there is no tear out or anything. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. Now it's time to pack and go. Sorry to stand up for the poor. Yep, there you can see how the aluminum is going to run down in the spout. All right, here we go. The aluminum that I'm using is just from recycled car parts like rims or manifolds that have been previously cast. I just like to keep an eye on the temperature so I know about where I'm at. And then I'm just scraping the dross out. I put in pretty clean aluminum so there's not much dross. Especially when you put big chunks in, it doesn't allow it to really oxidize too much before it melts. Always good to use lifting tongs. Those are my new lifting tongs I made in the garage. I was going to count the pores right here, like the count on Sesame Street. Because if you're my age, that's probably what you grew up on. But I'd figure it'd be so corny, I'd probably end up losing subscribers.
All right, let's see how this turned out. Looks like it turned out pretty good. Just got to do some cleanup on it. And here we go. We're going to do some cleanup. We're going to clean the flashing off the sides. I like using that little burr. See, you can tell right there it cleaned up. Cleaned up real nice. All right, so here we go. We got the uh, skull done or the casting done. It polished up a little bit. And now we need to drill the hole on the back side. And so the order of operation that we're going to do this and you know, I talked about holding this in a vise and it's an odd piece. So is how we're gonna achieve holding this in a vise is to actually 3D print a negative of it and we'll put it in there like this and then we'll clamp it up in the vise and that way it will hold it in the vise good enough so we can drill it. Um, one mistake that I realized I, I wish I changed was since these parts are two halves, I probably could have made it overlap and had it held in to the mold a lot better, so that into the holder a lot better, so that way I can go ahead and uh, put it in the fixture and drill it and tap it. So anyway, since I didn't do that, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put some blue tape around it and then put it in the vise and we'll go ahead and go through this operation. We'll use a little uh, center drill and that way I can put a little mark on there and the drill won't wobble and miscenter itself on the part. And then we'll go ahead and tap it. And after that, it'll be ready to use as a uh, drawer knob. So uh, let's get this going. I'm using a little center drill here so that way I can put a pilot hole down in the aluminum so my drill bit doesn't wander all over and make a hole where I don't want it. Oh boy, looks like my drill bit's been drinking wobbling all over the place. I'm probably going to have to get a new one or figure something out with that. Shouldn't wobble that bad. Thank God I had a center drill. Tape's there so that way I don't go all the way through the skull. Thread size I'm using is 832nd for the tap. That seems to be the most common thread size for the uh, knobs on the drawers. I have a little bit of lubricant on the tap and also I'm spinning it by hand so that way I don't get it stuck inside there and break it off. All right, welcome to the shoulda, woulda, coulda part. So anyway, I think we already talked about this. The 3D clamp was a good idea so that way I could uh, have this 3D printed model of an inverse of the skull. So all I had to do to clamp it up and hold it was to put it in there put both of them on and then clamp it in the vise. But like I said, I would have liked a little overlap so that way it really would have secured in there. I think that would have been a good idea. Another idea that I realized that was too late after I was done was the standoff needs to be a little longer for several reasons. One, you can tell if this was part of a drawer, I can still grab it, I, but I can't really grab it. My fingers aren't really getting back behind it. So I think to fix that issue, I'm gonna make the standoff a little longer. So not only would it make it more usable, but it would add me more threads to this part so that way the screw could go farther down inside of it and be a little bit more, little bit more durable. So anyway, that's that for that part. And those are the things I, I, if I ever make another knob for a drawer or something custom like that, I think I'll uh, implement to get a better result. Yay, you made it to the end of my video. I appreciate you watching the video through its entirety. Um, if you're a subscriber, I appreciate you having subscribed to my channel. If you're not, maybe you want to subscribe to my channel to see more things that I come up with. Also, uh, let me know if anything I put on this helped you out, or maybe you got ideas for me to do that could have been better, so that way I can implement those and uh, come out with better results. Thanks again for watching my channel. See you next time.